From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for the abundant blessings that God has given to her family, especially a beautiful great-granddaughter and a great-grandchild on the way. May God continue to call young people to the priesthood, and may there be solutions to the wars everywhere in our world today. Our thanks go out to the donor of this Mass. Now, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us remind ourselves that Jesus has promised us, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and we look with enthusiasm and with hope for these places. <coughs> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading, and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you, and under your protection, rejoice forever unharmed. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul and his companion reached Antioch, they went to the synagogue. Paul was invited to address the people so he stood up and began to speak. My brothers, you descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God, to us the message of the salvation has been sent. Because the residents of Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus or understand the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath, they fulfilled those words by condemning him. Even though they found no cause for a sentence of death, they asked Pilate to have him killed. When they had carried out everything that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days, he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, and they are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son, Today I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper, he said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have, no, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. A first reading from the Acts of the Apostles finds Paul on his first missionary journey. He goes through the towns of Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. And in each of these places, he preaches Christ crucified. You know, I've been going through, when I walk through the malls and walk through the parking lot, I look for all the little signs that hang from the rearview mirror. I have never seen a miniature guillotine to represent the French Revolution in 1789. I've never seen a lasso, a noose to hang people to represent the way they dealt with in the West. I've never seen an electric chair, a miniature electric chair. But I've seen the cross again and again, almost in one every three cars. And I feel like putting a sign there saying, scenes of nudity and violence, viewer discretion is advised. We just take the crucifix and the cross and that violent scene for granted. For 2,000 years we've been seeing it, we've grown immune to it. Why would Paul preach about Christ crucified? It was a sign or a scandal to the Jewish people and a, and a stumbling block to the Gentiles. And then we go to the gospel today. And Jesus tells us, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. It's a reading that we hear so very often for funerals a promise, a hope, that it does not end at the cross. 
But the cross is very much a part of our everyday life. Yesterday, Archbishop Thomas Cardinal Collins said, the people of the time of the Acts of the Apostles, they had a great deal of difficulty. We showed that there were a lot of conversions and there were a lot of miracles, but there were also a lot of problems and troubles. Why do we have the suffering in our world today? One of my eighth graders told me, he says, Father, Adam and Eve suffered and committed a sin thousands of years ago. Why do I have to pay it today? The story of Adam and Eve is an allegorical story to express our own finiteness, our own weakness, our own frailty. It shows us that left to ourselves, we are bound to fall. Even if there was no story of Adam and Eve, you have to just look around and see our selfishness, our greed, and the way we put ourselves above other people. How often have you gone into, let us say, the public transport, into buses and trams, and it's packed, and people will put their bags on the seat next to them, even though there are people around? So often I feel like saying, ma'am or mister, you've paid for one seat. You haven't paid for the other. Or you see people sitting in the train and putting their legs up on the seat with their soiled shoes without caring a bit about who is going to come next. We go to the Mandarin or one of these places which have buffets, and you just pile your food up and even though there are a whole lot of people waiting next to you, and you say, well, it doesn't matter, the waiter will bring some more. We don't seem to think about other people. It's always about me, myself, and I. A comedian has very well described our present-day situation in one word. He says, when it comes to things, we have cars that are keyless, we have cooking that is fireless, we have cell phones that are wireless. We have tires that are tubeless, which is all well and good. But when it comes to human beings, it is disastrous. We have teenagers that are jobless. We have leaders that are shameless. We have attitudes that are careless. We have babies, many of them fatherless. We have children that are mannerless. We have governments that are clueless and politicians that are shameless. And I'm scared, stiff, witless. This is the world we live in. And yet, there is a challenge for us to get out of ourselves. And that is why Jesus is saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. Come and follow me. And I am going to show you the way in which you can come into these dwelling places that my Father has prepared for each one of you. And it comes through service. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was in prison and sick and you came to visit me. But is that the reality? We go into a dining room over there and you have taken the very last piece and I remained hungry. I went for a drink and you took the very last beer and I'm still thirsty. I was standing in this great community room where everybody says I love you, but you stood and talked to the young men and young women who were full of ha laughter and I stood there lonely, abandoned and afraid. And so Jesus challenges us to get out of ourselves because he will show us the way he will show us that what is truth. He will show us what is life. Our story ends, our gospel ends today with, with Jesus telling us that. But Philip goes one step further and says, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus says to him, Philip, I've been so long with you and you still do not know that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Do you not care to realize that if you know me well enough? And how do we know Jesus? Jesus said, I am meek and humble at heart. Come to me, all you who are labor and overburdened, and I will give you rest. 
Jesus shows us everything which is so different from our world today that is self-centered. A world that will pour out itself. I came to serve, not to be served, and to be a ransom for many. This is what we are called to. And if we follow Christ the way Paul did, then we are on the right track. God bless you all. Let us pray together. Christ rose from the dead and is always present in his church. May we be witnesses to Jesus Christ by the way we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, and clothe the naked. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, victor over sin and death, glorious and immortal, stay always with us until the end of time. We pray to the Lord. Come to us in the power of your victory and show our hearts the loving kindness of the Father. We pray to the Lord. For our donor today of the Mass, in thanksgiving to God for a great grandchild and for our beautiful grand, great granddaughter, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen our faith in final victory and renew our hope in your second coming so that we may dwell in the dwelling places prepared by the Father. We pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, thank you for all the gifts you have given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, the offering of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. And integrity of life has been restored in Jesus Christ. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people rejoices in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we sing together. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew. 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Mary Ward, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and come and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. For those of you at home, join with me now in a prayer by Father J. Bourgeau of North Bay. He calls it Quiet Time. Lighting the candle this morning, I sit quietly before it. This is time set aside for God and me to be together. I wait in stillness. I listen. God listens. God is never too busy to listen. My heart is open. I come empty. I come in hope. I come in need to be made anew. Come, Lord. Your presence is creative, life-giving. Cleanse and refresh me. Encourage and strengthen me for the day ahead. Thank you for our time together. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may always rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick. And your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Don't you doubt me? You've been found guilty of some of the most depraved and bizarre crimes I've ever encountered. This is a chance to right or wrong, Woody. How splendid would that be? The truth will out, George. I'll see to it personally. How? I shall make a tremendous noise. I will stir things up. But if you fall short, as you're bound to do, you will taint not only yourself, but the world's favorite consulting detective. Arthur and George, only on Vision TV. Discover what's new on Vision TV. Visit visiontv.ca and explore upcoming programs or watch your favorite episodes online. Visit visiontv.ca today. You're watching Vision TV.